Good morning, it's Mr. Prentice here, and today we're looking at uh, solving equations with pronumerals on both sides of the equation. So hopefully we have already seen how to solve equations with fractions and doing two-step equations, looking at, say, adding and subtracting uh, constants to both sides and, you know, dividing or timesing to get just a single x or a single pronumeral. Uh, this time we're looking at if the pronumerals are on both sides. It's nothing majorly different, uh, just sometimes people get thrown off by it. So let's have a look and see uh, what we have. So I'll just go through a number of examples. So the first one is if we want to work out what is x that makes this true? That 5 times x plus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 4. Okay, and normally when we see this and we see pronumerals on both sides, um, we would want to take away pronumerals for the pronumeral from one of the sides. Okay, so in this case here, I can see I've got a 2x on this side that I want to just get it as 5x is equal to something. So what I'll do is I'll take away 2x from this right-hand side. And again, I don't mind how you would show this. You could write minus 2x, you know, from this side to show it's 2x minus 4, uh, take away 2x. Uh, so that right-hand side is just going to be at minus 4 or negative 4. Um, or you could show this as just with an arrow and saying minus 2x. Uh, I totally don't mind which way you show that, but the idea is if we are taking away 2x from the right-hand side, we also have to take away 2x from the left-hand side as well. So 5x plus 3 take away 2x is what we'd be left with. Okay, so uh, obviously 5x take away 2x is left with 5 minus 2, which is 3x. So we'll be left with 3x uh, plus 3 on the left hand side. Okay, so that became our first step. And then we can, uh, we want to just solve this and just get x uh, by itself on this left hand side. Or of course, we could get it on the right hand side as well. So I'm going to take away 3 from both sides now. So I'm going to take away 3 from this side. And I'm going to take away 3 from that side as well. Okay, so 3x plus 3 minus 3 cancelled out, so I'm just left with 3x on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side, I've got uh, minus 4 or negative 4, and then I'm taking away another 3, so I'm left with negative 7. Okay, uh, and my last step I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this side by 3, and I'm going to divide that by, side by 3, um, so I'll be left with x is equal to negative 7 over 3. Okay, or minus 7 over 3. That negative could be at the top in the numerator, or it could be before the fraction. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You won't lose marks either way uh, for doing that. Okay, let's look at another example. EG2. So, say we've got um, more, a bigger pronumeral on the right hand side. So just say I've got uh, 5m plus 8, but that's equal to 7m, say, minus 4. So 5m plus 8 equals to 7m minus 4. And now there is two ways about solving this. The first way is to just to say, I want to just have a um, get my m's or to the left hand side and that means I would just say I don't want 7m on the right hand side this side so I'll take I could take away 7m from that side and take away 7m from the left hand side as well uh, it's just if I did that what I'd be left with is on this left side I'd be left with 5m take away 7m which is minus 2m plus 8. Now, it's perfectly fine to do that. I'm not saying don't do it. Uh, and I, I'll continue this and show. It's just that I now have a negative 2 there. Now, some students aren't happy with that, and sometimes we'll just make it so it's on the positive side. But I'm happy with doing this, so we'll just continue. Uh, we'll take away 8 now from both sides, and we'd be left with take away 
oh, I should write it there, take away eight, take away eight. You get used to not writing these red things uh, soon. So I'm going to be left with negative 2m on the left side. Okay, so I had plus eight take away eight, so they canceled out. So I'm just left with this negative 2m. And then minus four, uh, and then minus another eight, so it is, is minus 12, or negative 12. And then I would divide by negative two. And this is why we've just done like, you know, a negative number divided by a negative number. Um, if the signs are the same, it's it's a positive answer. And, and we looked at those kind of things for multiplication and all of those kind of work. Uh, because now I've got negative two M over negative two, which is just M is equal to negative two, 12 divided by negative two, which is six. So M is equal to six. Okay, again, I don't mind if you show it like this, or instead of this red part, if you showed this as minus 7m, minus 8, and divide by negative 2. Okay, and then you'll do the same to that side um, and show them as well. You know, negative 7m, um, what did I do? Minus 8, divide by negative 2. I don't mind which one is easier. This is what the second one this is what it would look like if you had the, if you did it that way. Uh, yeah, I totally don't mind. Um, I just want to show you what we could have done is if we had that same question, and you don't need to do this again, but if we did the same thing, but I took away the 5m from the left-hand side instead, I'd be left with... Um, took away the 5m, so I'd be left with 8, and then take away 5m from here, I'd be left with 2m minus 4 as my first step. I would now add 4 to both sides because I don't want to just, I don't want, I just want to get just m. Okay, so I'm going to add 4 to this side, so I'd be left with just m minus 4 plus 4, and that means I'll have to add 4 to that side as well, which is 12. And now I would divide both sides by 2. So here I'd be left with um, m is equal to 12 over 2, which is 6, or, or 6 equals m, or m equals to 6, okay? Please don't leave your answer just as the, like this, because I want to know what m is equal to. That's what I'm trying to solve. So I like that statement just being as my unknown on the left-hand side. You will still get the same answer. I just did it in a different way because I just um, kind of, people say, moved the, the things to the right-hand side instead uh, for that. Uh, last session, we looked at fractions. And let's have a look at one with a fraction this time. Uh, so say, say I had 4x plus 5 over 2 is equal to 7x. Okay, so we've got a fraction now, and we've also got pronumerals on both sides. Okay, uh, if I took away the 7x from that right-hand side first, it does not just go in the numerator. Okay, so it would be a bit silly with that because the left hand side I'd just be left with with 4x plus 5 over 2 and then take away 7x. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is get rid of this fraction or remove this fraction from the left hand side so I could multiply both sides by 2. Okay, I'll do it with the arrows way this time. I'm going to multiply that side by 2 and I'm multiplying that side by 2. Okay, so what I'm left with is 4x plus 5 on the left side because I had half of 4x plus 5 and now I've just times by 2. And then the right side, 7x times 2 or double 7x is 14x. Okay, so 4x plus 5 um, is equal to 14x. Now, just to save me moving this 14x to the left side and then taking away 5, I can see this here. I'm, I'm going to actually move it to the right-hand side like in my second example. Okay, oh, there you go. That's full screen now. It's better. So 
I am actually going to take away the 4x from this left side instead of taking away the 14x from the right side. Okay, again, it wouldn't matter which one you did it. I'm just thinking that way looks easier. So I take away 4x from this left side, so I'm just left with 5. And I take away 4x from this right side, and I just left, I'm just left with 10x. Okay. Uh, now my final thing is if I divide this by 10, okay, so I'm going to divide this right hand side by 10 to get just x. And I have to divide the left hand side by 10, so I'm left with half. Okay, so that's what I'm just left with. I'm left with half is equal to x or x is equal to a half. Okay, we could check to see. Now, because there's pro numerals on both sides, um, you know, it's harder to check with the calculator. But I could write, I could work it out and I could show you. So like the left hand side, I'm saying x equals half is the correct answer. So the left hand side is 4x plus 5 over 2. So 4 times a half plus 5 over 2. Okay, normally I would put brackets in there. Okay, so 4 times brackets a half plus 5 over 2. And I could just put this on my calculator here. So it's 4 times a half, okay, plus five over two. Okay, so the left-hand side is equal to seven over two, and the right-hand side is equal to seven X, which we know is seven times by a half. So seven, times, oh, not minus, one half. Okay, so that's also equal to seven over two. So you can see that I solved the equation and it's the only time that makes this equation true. This is the only value of x that would make it so the left-hand side is the same value as the right-hand side. Uh, Let's do another one, and then we can look at maybe, you know, a little bit more and see what we've got. So, EG4. Put it in black. EG4. Um, let's find the value of X and Y. I've got examples here from the book that we're going to look at, and it's got... Find the value of X and Y if you've got, say, a rectangle... And in this rectangle, just say, I'll make this up now. I've got this length is 5x minus 2 and, say, 3x plus 5. Okay? So my rectangle has these lengths that are the same. So straight away from this geometrical kind of problem, I can see from that that this length, 5x minus 2, has to be the same as 3x plus 5. Okay, so what I'm using, I'll just check to see, it's still working, good, um, is 5x minus 2 equals to 3x plus 5. Okay, so just made that up. But this just becomes a basic equation, and that's what we get from there. We'll take away 3x from both sides, um, I do want you to show your lines with your working, but I'm not with this example. I'm going to take away 3x from this side, and I'm going to take away 3x from that side. So 2x minus 2 is equal to 5. Okay, I just want to get x, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So this left side is just 2x, okay, because minus 2 plus 2 cancelled out, and now 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, and therefore my answer divided by 2 is x is 7 over 2. Okay, that is the value for x that would make that true. Um, there's also questions in your book that have for show x and y, and it's the same concept. Just say I have y plus 2 on that side, and I've got 
y over 5, oh, that's skipping ahead to when we've got ones with brackets, but too late now, I've already done it. What we'll get is our y plus 2 is equal to our y over 5. Okay, what is the value of y that makes these true? Okay, so I have to multiply. Do I multiply by 5 or do I take away 2 first? Okay, um, so this one here, if I took away 2, it doesn't really help because I'm still left with it. So I have to, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 first. Okay, I multiply this side by 5. And I'm going to just get y, and I'm going to multiply this side by 5. And the whole thing is multiplied by 5. So I get 5 is times by that whole y plus 2. Now, this is why we've been doing, you know, all these different algebra skills. Because I can now solve this. I have to obviously expand this out, and we'll look at this a bit more next session. But... You know, the y, the 5 is going to times by the y, and also it's going to times by the 2. So we'll be left with, I'll zoom in just so you can see a bit more, 5y plus 10. Remember, it's not 5y plus 2. It's 5y plus 10 is equal to y. Okay, and then that's quite easy to solve. I can take away y from both sides, so 4y plus 10 is equal to 0. Okay, I will take away 10 from both sides. 4y is equal to negative 10. And then I'll divide by 4. So y is equal to negative 10 over 4. Okay, which is the same as negative, what's that? Negative 2 and a half. So you could say, you know, you could say negative 2.5. But... Normally, we'll just leave them as a fraction, okay? But makes it true, you know, negative 2.5 over 5 will be the same as negative 2.5 plus 2. So we can check it and see. So brackets, negative 2.5, wrong button, plus 2. The left-hand side is equal to negative a half. Huh. The question's totally wrong, isn't it? Because it's a... Um, doesn't even have a real length as a negative number there. Okay? Um, and the right-hand side is negative 2.5 um, over 5. And that negative should have been at the top, but it doesn't matter. So the right-hand side is also negative a half. Uh, notice this problem, you know, it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, it's the only answer that would be true that this is equal to this, but it also means that these lengths, so-called lengths, are a negative length, and you can't have a negative length. So this question is actually impossible. Um, we'll look at a final question with geometrical properties, and we'll look about look at these geometrical properties later. But, e.g., just say we have, here you go, a two crossing lines. Where's my thing? Line crossing and another line crossing, okay? Make it, it doesn't, doesn't matter where they cross. Um, but what we get is these two angles, right, like this side and this side. So those two angles, what they're called, they're called vertically opposite angles. Okay, these two angles are also called vertically opposite angles as well. Okay, so when two lines, you know, cross each other, they make sets of vertically opposite angles and they are an equal um, size. So what we get is we can then see, so just say in this question, we've got this is 2G plus 7 as an angle. Okay, that's that might be 2g plus 7 degrees, just say. And this one here is 5g minus 4 degrees. 
Okay, so these angles are the same. We just want to work out what G is. Now, because they're the same, I would say that 2G plus 7 is equal to 5G minus 4. And then I would solve that. Okay, so um, I might... I might get the G's to the left-hand side this time. It's not going to make it easier. Probably be easier the other way, but I'm just going to keep moving it to the left. So I take away 5G from both sides. Okay, so 2G take away 5G is actually negative 3G plus 7. And I'm going to take away the 5G from this side, so I'm just left with negative 4 from the right-hand side. Okay, I want to get G by itself, so I'll take away 7. So, three, negative 3g is equal to, okay, took away 7, so minus 4, take away 7 is minus 11. And therefore, I then would divide both sides by negative 3. So, g is negative 11 divided by negative 3. Okay, that's not going to simplify except for making it as 11 over 3 because the negative over negative becomes a positive. Okay, of course you could put in your calculator 11 over three, which doesn't simplify unless you press the SD button to make it a decimal. So three and two thirds, you could say, but unless it asked for a mixed numeral, you wouldn't uh, get the answer. Um, you, you, sorry, you wouldn't, you wouldn't lose marks unless it asked for a mixed numeral or an improper fraction. Uh, the other thing is, is we could check to see what the angles actually are. So the left-hand side is, let's have a look. The left-hand side is 2G plus 7. So it's 2 times 11 over 3 plus 7, which is, I'll just use a calculator, 2 times 11 over 3 plus 7. So that's the left-hand side's 43 thirds or 14 and a third. And the right-hand side would also be 14 and a third. You could check that if you want, but I just want to show you that that is what the angle size is. That's the angle size. So if it asks you for, you for what are the angles, that's 14 and a third degrees. And that's 14 and a third degrees. I just didn't put degrees there. Okay? Which is the same as 14 degrees, 20 minutes. We'll talk about that another time or in the future. Okay? Good luck with your work. I hope this was helpful.